Hi, I'm Mr. Casta at Milt Middle School, and you're watching West Virginia History in two minutes or less. If you look all over our state, there are hundreds of mounds that have been built. Let's talk about who put them there and what they used them for. Here we go. What we know about the Adena people has been pieced together from artifacts, including the mounds. The Adena are part of the Woodland Period, in particular the Early Woodland Period, which dates from about 500 BC to 100 AD. The name originated from Thomas Worthington. His estate near Chillicothe was called Adena, and a mound was located nearby. The Adena culture centered in what is now southern Ohio, but their culture was spread out across numerous present-day states, including West Virginia. They were a hunter-gatherer society, and leaders were most likely chosen based on merit. Typical settlements contained one or two circular houses, and evidence suggests they moved every couple of years. They hunted elk, deer, and other animals like turkey using various styles of points. The Adena also grew tobacco, sunflower, squash, and pumpkin. They used everything from bone, antler, and stone to make their tools. They also left behind works of art such as beads, combs, and gorgets that were worn around the neck. Perhaps the most famous artifact left behind are the mounds, which is why the Adena are usually just called mound builders. Over the years, many mounds have been completely destroyed or improperly excavated, like these examples in Dunbar, West Virginia. Typically, when someone of importance died, they burned a mortuary building and piled dirt atop it. Hundreds of thousands of baskets of specially selected dirt were moved to create these structures. They were built in sections. Most mounds were found near major river valleys such as the Kanawha, Ohio, and Potomac, and some like the one at Cannon Park are still visible today. The Creel Mound is located where the Creel family farm once was. The mound once had extensive earthen works around it for miles on both sides of the Canal River. Excavated by Colonel Norris in 1883, two skeletons were found at a depth of four feet with various artifacts, and at 24 to 31 feet, the master tomb with the person of great importance at the center, surrounded by five others on each side. The top was once flattened for a judge's stand as horse races were held around it some time prior to the excavations. The Grave Creek Mound once had a 40-foot wide moat around it. The upper tomb had one skeleton with other artifacts. The second chamber had a male and female skeleton with other artifacts, including an atlatl. Many items are lost as it hosted a saloon on top at one point, held artillery during the Civil War, and you guessed it, horse races were also held around it.